Hey, thanks for joining us today to dive into Cyber Defense of Operational Technology, or OT Environments. With the early March release of the National Cybersecurity Strategy, there were a lot of mentions of OT and critical infrastructure. 51 critical infrastructure, and I think four that I counted about operational technology specifically. And so I lead the Cyber Accelerator team here at Lidos, and I get to build tech solutions for our customers' challenges, which increasingly include integrating operational technology into their environments and providing cyber defense around that. So today I'm joined by Nicholas Franklin, who I have the privilege to work with here at Lidos on a range of different efforts that increase the resilience around cyber physical systems. Together we work to make our world healthier, healthier safer, and more efficient um, through science, engineering, and technology. And today we're gonna to talk about what OT is, some challenges with cyber defense around OT, and some exciting opportunities that we see for innovation, and leave with a view to the future. But before we get going, Nick, how about a quick intro? Hey, thanks so much, Megan. I'm super happy to be here today and chat about this with you. Um, I'm overly passionate about this topic and you hit on a great point. The, the recent executive branch's national cybersecurity strategy gave a drastic hone into operational technology and critical infrastructure as an emphasis item going forward. And it's a trend we kind of see across the whole industry. We can start looking back at recent events the big one that stands out like Colonial Pipeline is kind of a wake up call to the world that these environments are now under threat. They are under attack and they are an area where we've got to begin honing new solutions and new ideas to protect them from the adversary. <clears throat> My background, just as a quick intro, I come out of a traditional IT background, designing secure infrastructure originally, and then pivoted into operational technology through work as a risk analyst and then doing criticality analysis and actually pen testing in specific operational environments where things like availability are a massive role. We have to begin kind of changing our brains when we look at operational technology in certain ways that I, I hope we get to dig into a little bit here today. And now in my role at Lidos, I uh, serve as a cyber physical leader inside our civil group, and I aid a multitude of industries, both federal and civil, as far as how they address strategy and operational technology environments and creating good solutions for them. Oh, well, you know what? You just almost got to my first question, <laughs> so let's just go there. So what's, tell me a little bit about operational technology, what it is, what cyber defense of it looks like, you know, what's kind of the same and what's different as you compare it to an enterprise? Well, you'll get That's a like lot three of questions in one, Nick. <laughs> I think I got an idea what you're looking for. Well, you'll, <laughs> you'll get a lot of different definitions and, and, and jargon thrown around in the field. You'll hear things like cyber physical. That's a big umbrella term, covers lots of things. Uh, operational technology is kind of what it says. It's technology honed towards the operation of something. What I like to say is this is an intersection where computer technology affects the real world with moving parts, moving pieces, and in the end, moving functions of an operation. That's OT to me. And that intersection is kind of a, an interesting place because it changes a lot of our priorities. A lot of things are the same. We still look at things with a risk management perspective. What's valuable to us as an organization? What can we do to defend those things that are valuable? We still have to have that same hat on and we still use common principles. I'll go back to like cybersecurity 101 with the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Traditional IT analysts and, and early in my career, we focused very heavily on confidentiality and integrity as a main source and availability tended to kind of fall third and that made sense, CIA triad. You get into an operational environment, take something like a weapon system or power infrastructure, like the energy that powers all these computers and homes around us, availability becomes much, much more important. Um, things like confidentiality might not play as much of a role. They're still really important and we wanna emphasize them. We kind of turn our hat around a little bit and begin looking at things a little bit differently there. Another area that kind of changes and kind of maybe changes more drastically is focuses on incident response, how we handle potential incidents or potential threats inside our network. Operational environments can be very physically dangerous. Safety becomes a massive focus. You could be dealing with tons upon tons of moving machinery that the wrong adjustment or the wrong response to an incident could in fact impact actual lives or worse, you know, not even not worse to be fair, but in similar case, affect that availability contract we just mentioned. Um, IT professionals, as great as we are, and, and cybersecurity professionals, as great as we are, we don't want to be the cause of problems either, especially in situations where maintaining things like uptime is a huge focus. 
we really, really have to look at those areas as a little different than just traditional computer technology. And more importantly, work closely with engineers, plant managers, chief architects that understand the more physical elements to it that our infrastructure, our network is actually communicating with and controlling. I think it's an exciting part of this is that it really is this merge of the physical world from I think cyberspace to people feel so virtual and so disconnected, even though it interacts with our physical world in so many ways. But I'm betting that adds a lot of challenges as we're looking at cyber defenses and how they need to evolve with evolving threats. So what sort of challenges do you see in cyber defense to these operational technology environments? At the first layer, probably more important than any other, it starts with just understanding the environment. These areas have gotten so complex so fast, getting visibility and being able to look at the environment from a control perspective and understand what we're actually trying to protect is probably the first place and the first big challenge a lot of industries see that just insight of, okay, what is all on my network? What does it control? What's important to me? There's a reason you could go back to things like the CIS top 18 and IT, the first two controls are inventory, inventory your assets, inventory your software. Well, that doesn't really change when you get into OT either. The first step in there is, okay, understand your environment, have that insight into seeing what's all present to you. And we're just not there yet in a lot of industries. And one of the driving factors in that is an incredible explosion of complexity in recent years. Things are changing very fast. They're expanding their footprint as far as what operational technology elements are actually interconnected on networks. We see technologies that used to be maybe simple point-to-point -point serial bus lines, real classic old-school architectures. Now they've got 5G LTE backends providing data to a CM database, and it's a dispersed grid with multiple industries interconnecting or multiple contractors interconnecting pieces the complexities really began to become a big challenge. And that complexity is driving that lack of visibility in a big way. That's for me, probably number one. Well, I think visibility is hard across the enterprise for the same reasons, right? Of that knowing yourself is always the first part. Um, but as you got to it, there's a lot there about this concept out around and lots of talk around IT and OT convergence about how these environments are really coming together, but they just create something that's even more diverse and even more heterogeneous. So what are you seeing as ways that customers are starting to figure out how to defend these merged environments? Any, well, any tools you're seeing that look better for one than the other or both? There's some nuance there as far as tool mm -hmm. application. Like there are specific tools now that hone themselves directly to operational technology environments. And, and they're great. There's a multiple two that I'm not going to plug anyone specific, but OT visibility suites are wonderful things. And they've really begun to be a growing industry, despite the fact they're really less than 10 years old uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as a product, very, very immature for an IT product compared to like what we have in the traditional IT space. And that integration from those into our IT area, say your SIM solution, you may use in a corporate environment, is beginning to drive that convergence. What we really think from an architectural standpoint is how much separation is acceptable for a safety perspective. We don't want to just absolutely connect our OT and IT environments, but we also want to streamline and scale and work at speed there. So we need to be able to function with our existing tool sets as well. And it comes down to looking at what's valuable to you. Maybe you're in a situation where you're not looking to push into an environment, make rapid modifications like we like patching for example like we do in our IT environment pushing things down to every node in the corporate network we might be a little bit more hesitant to that in an OT environment because honestly patching could cause issues we didn't anticipate and that could cause downtime which we don't want but we want log data out so you can create one-way pathways there bring that log data out into our corporate environment into our traditional sim that way we can use our good corporate tools to kind of look through it and get an understanding and then execute our whatever our procedures are in a better way into fixing issues that we see from that data the architecture there it's just a matter of your risk tolerance. There are gonna still be some areas where they're gonna completely separate, but they're getting rarer and rarer as we have to move a little bit faster and kind of deal with these challenges a little bit quicker. Yeah, I mean, that's what goes along with visibility is response, right? So how do you speed things up? Now with all of those challenges and with, um, as you mentioned, you know, this being a really still early kind of market, that to me feels like it's just ripe for innovation, um, particularly with an emphasis even from a strategic level of how we better 
uh, defend critical infrastructure. So I'm wondering what you're excited about seeing over the next mm -hmm. few years. What kinds of solutions? What kinds of capabilities? I'll be honest with you. It's almost like opening Pandora's box to some degree. It reminds me of the earliest days of really where cybersecurity became a threat actor inside or a threat environment inside IT, kind of the 90s, early 2000s when we saw that massive explosion of new tools, new techniques, new ways of handling. And that continues to evolve today in things like zero trust and zero trust implementations. We're seeing that in OT2 now. I mean, it's still so immature, but that, the thing that excites me the most is we're going to be the way we do it today with a secure, you know, ICS style architecture, you can lean on things like the Purdue model for those that really want to get into the weeds. That's great. We're not 100% sure if that's going to work tomorrow, though. We've got to start somewhere. So we're starting at a good spot in a lot of ways. But as we saw that growth in these energy sectors and the differentiation diversity of their networks, as they begin to interconnect and get smarter, we're going to have to change some of those models to some degree. And that's where more sophisticated technology is really going to help us. I don't like to throw out too much in the way of buzzwords, but we've all seen AI in the news lately. AI is coming to the OT space too. And hopefully it gets there fast because I think it can actually help us a lot more. We can be looking at the rigidity of OT networks make a more understandable environment for AI technologies. We're not dealing with near the diversity of operations of an IT network. Think about a corporate enterprise. You're going to have development. You're going to have, you, know, you might have people who are having remote access to specific tools. You'll have virtualized environments. You'll have cloud environments. OT is not quite that complex yet. So it's a little bit of an easier pill to swallow for a more advanced technology. I think, I think, really the environment's suitable for AI in a fast way. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the next five to six years, we have a highly sophisticated technology being deployed into these environments for defense. And that makes me really excited because OT's emphasis is gonna make it more cutting edge, I think quicker than IT got to in a big way. Yeah, and as you think about it, it where that technology lives is actually so diversely spread out. It's so geo-distributed and it's in places that might be you, you know, might have it in rural. your house. But it's also in your house. So there's, yeah. I mean, such a variety, too, of different technologies cool. that I'm excited well, for that, too. One of my favorite things to emphasize to people when they begin thinking about OT is look around your own house. Now we, we focus on substations and airports and water and gas management, big concepts. But you have maybe an electric car. And it plugs into the grid every day. And maybe your electric car is really fancy and you can summon it out of your driveway or something of that nature. That's operational technology you interface with every day. Your, your HVAC system controlled by a smart meter so you can set the, path, you know, set the temperature before you come home. That's operational technology we interface with every day. It's literally all, all around us and it hasn't gotten that emphasis that we've given to things like the computer that sits at our desk. And, and that's changing quickly because the threat space has changed. There's... To this day, when we look at ICS, industrial control system specific malware, we're talking in the tens, not the hundreds, not the thousands, because it's still real cutting edge, but it's growing fast. And threat actors are beginning to target those environments because they understand how important they are. If a energy substation is hit with something like ransomware, there is no good backup solution. I can't go buy another substation off the shelf. It, we have no choice but to respond in more drastic ways, such as paying the ransom or hoping we can deal with a potential outage. Those aren't acceptable in a lot of ways. So we have to get better at protecting those environments because of their importance level. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the safety aspect that you mentioned of that feels so critical uh, to make this even more important. Now, um, in my role, it's about getting technology solutions faster. So I'm going to have to ask you, how, how do we accelerate getting these capabilities so that we actually have better cyber defense of these OT environments? Well, the first is kind of tackling that issue I mentioned earlier, which is understanding the environment. There's so much, that's so much of the legwork up front that takes a long time. And the way we speed that up is you have to have a more diversified intelligence space inside your company when you're looking to tackle these environments. I mentioned plant managers, chief engineers, substation engineers, architects earlier. Those people have to be tightly, tightly knit with your cybersecurity team. You have to work hand in hand. It takes both because there's a physical aspect to these things that someone like an analyst like me isn't gonna understand. Let's go put on a hard hat. Let's go look at the actual system. That's gonna speed things up a lot, but that's a capability just a lot of organizations don't have. 
we're lucky here. I'm going to brag on us for just a moment. I get to interface with OT in what I call three different layers. First is actual endpoint operational technology products. We, we build aviation security appliances. If you've been through an airport, you've probably seen the LIDOS badge. We, we like to brag about that. That's an operational technology component we make. So I get to interface with the engineers that design that, talk to them about how they secure that, make it better, help them design an understanding of, okay, what does it need to actually do its job? And then we can protect that function more than anything else. And then at an even larger level, you get to deal with the overall operational technology design, a secure architecture design. We have a large substation engineering business. I get to deal with them quite a bit too. I've learned so much working with them because I'm helping them design cybersecurity into how we build out energy transmission for our customers. So that's like those two, two top layers. And that final layer is that analyst layer, that more traditional cyber layer but it's home to these operational technology environments with that understanding of working with those engineers, plant managers, architects to gain that cohesive picture of, okay, I see XYZ device doing something strange. What does it mean to the actual function? Is it something we're really worried about? Is it a threat actor? Do we respond more aggressively because we think we're under attack or do we maybe be a little bit more patient because this might be just something that's normal within our network that we didn't understand because we didn't have that conversation. If we can break that barrier of communication between the two, we can more rapidly begin understanding, more rapidly deploy tools that actually help our mission. And that's where you get speed and scale in a fast way. It starts with that education between the two because it's just been a laggard in the industry in a big way. At least that's how I would approach it. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I think that we're gonna see such speed um, coming up around solutions in this space for cyber defense. You know, if it's from your car to uh, the devices in your home to that wider network that, like you said, with microgrids and then with all those critical infrastructure organizations, water, gas, utilities and the like, um, just ripe for innovation here and really appreciate your insights on what it's going to take to secure it too, Nick. Thanks for hey, your time. Thank you for having me. I hope I was able to, to give some insight here and uh, look forward to helping, as I say, save the world. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> and thanks to all for watching and hope you enjoy the rest of Cyber Defenders.